In this example, we've been given a 4x4 four four matrix. The matrix A is first row 1, negative 2, 7, 9. Second row 3, negative 4, 5, 5. Third row 3, 6, 1, negative 1. And fourth row 4, 5, 3, 2. <clears throat> we've been asked to find the determinant of this very big looking matrix. Now, we learned from the last section what cofactor expansion is. And if we wanted to do a cofactor expansion, and simply turn this into four three by three determinants, we certainly could. However, in this section, we've learned that elementary row operations, specifically adding a multiple of one row to another row, does not have an impact on the determinant. So what I'd like to, to do is use some of those elementary row operations to see if we can knock this thing down a couple pegs. Usually the way that you would want to start with something like this is to find either a positive one or a negative one somewhere in your uh, in your matrix and then use that to start getting zeros either above and below it or left and right using elementary column operations. So for this determinant first thing I'd like to do is use the proper determinant notation where instead of using matrix bars we'll use determinant bars. Determinant bars simply being two vertical bars in here. Now please know that you do have options. You can start with any of the ones or negative ones that you see in here. I am going to do probably the most boring thing possible and use the one in the one one entry to zero out the three entries that are right below it. Then we'll do a uh, cofactor expansion down the first column. So three operations that I'm gonna do here will be negative three times the first row, add to the second row. That'll become the new second row. I'd also like to do negative 3 times the first row, add it to the third row to make that the new third row. And then we'll do negative 4 times the first row, add it to the fourth row, and that'll become the new fourth row. Adding multiples of the first row to the other rows will have no impact on the determinant. So that's good news for us. We are going to spread this out a little bit though. <clears throat> so negative 3 times 1, add to 3 we get the desired zero. Negative three times negative two, add to negative four, will give us positive two. And we'll take negative three times seven, add to five, negative 16. And we'll take negative three times nine, add to five, that'll be negative 22. Doing the same thing to the third row, negative three times one, add to three, we get zero. Negative 3 times negative 2 add to 6, we get 12. Negative 3 times 7 add to 1, we get negative 20. Negative 3 times 9 add to negative 1, that'll be negative 28. Doing okay so far. And finally, negative 4 times 1 add to 4, we get 0. Negative 4 times 2 add to 5, we get 13. Negative 4 times 7 add to 3, we get negative 25. And finally, negative 4 times 9 add to 2, we'll get negative 34. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll do a cofactor expansion. Down the first column. That's going to be the 1 1 term or 1 1 entry times the 1 1 cofactor plus the 2 1 entry times the 2 1 cofactor plus the 3 1 entry times the 3 1 cofactor and the 4 1 entry times the 4 1 cofactor. <clears throat> the reason that we're doing this, however, is because this term is 0, this term is 0, and this term is 0, so it doesn't really matter what the cofactors are equal to those terms are all going to be zero. We'll wind up with just the 1, 1 entry times the 1, 1 cofactor. 2, negative 16, negative 22, 12, negative 20, negative 28, 13, negative 25, negative 34. 
Now, these numbers are still looking pretty darn intimidating at this point. I think we can make them look a little less intimidating if we were to apply elementary row operation number two, which is multiply a row by a non-zero constant. However, because that is going to have an impact on the uh, determinant, what we can do is <clears throat> refer to it as factoring something out from each of these. So from row one, I'd like to factor out a greatest common factor of two. And from row two, I'd like to factor out a greatest common factor of four. So factoring those outside of the determinant, factoring out a two from the top row, that'll be one, negative eight, negative 11. Factoring out a four from the second row, that'll be three, negative five, negative seven. It's not a whole lot that we can do with that last row, so let's go ahead and not worry about it. Now at this point, uh, what you could do is take the one and the two and the four and combine them together into an eight, and we'll have a coefficient of eight. As far as elementary row operations are concerned from here, I think I'm gonna do the same thing as what I did before since I now have the one in the one one entry. I'm gonna use that one to zero out the two entries right below it. So the two operations that I will need to do so will be negative three times the new row one, add that to row two, and that'll become the new row two. Oh boy, then we're gonna take negative 13 times row one we're gonna add that to row three. That'll become the new row three. We'll probably regret that decision in just a moment. So first row overall is gonna stay the same. One, negative eight, negative 11. So we'll take negative three times one, add to three. Negative three times eight, add to negative five. That'll be 19. And negative three times negative 11, that's 33 minus seven, that is 26. Negative 13 times one, add to 13, we get zero. And this is where we're gonna start having regrets. Negative 13 times negative eight is 104, add to negative 25, that is 79. And negative 13 times negative 11, that's 143, add to negative 34, that's 109. <clears throat> As the young people say, big yikes. Well, now we can do yet another cofactor expansion. Down the first column. And rather than writing out all of the terms like I did previously, we'll just point out that after we do the one one entry times the one one cofactor, the other two entries will be zero. And so it's not even necessary to involve them in the conversation. So we'll still have eight. We'll be multiplying that by one, and then our minor will be 19, 26, 79, and 109. Now what I could do at this point is just do a little slashy slashy and call it good. However, I'm trying to do this without a calculator and I'm already kind of intimidated by 19 times 109 and 26 times 79. I'm not saying I can't do it, I'm saying I don't want to. So what I'm gonna do is use one more operation to just knock these numbers down a little bit. I know that 19 times four is 76 and 19 times five is 95. So what I'm gonna do is take negative four times the first row, add it to the second row to make the new second row. And hopefully these numbers will be a little less intimidating now. So overall, first row remains the same. If I take negative four times 19, that is negative 76, add to 79, we get three. Negative four times 26, that's negative 104, add to 109, I am all of a sudden so much less intimidated by this. In fact, let's knock these numbers down just, uh, just a little bit more. I think I can turn this 26 into, what do you say, a one? If I do negative five times the second row, add it to the first row, make that the new first row, It'll be eight times. The second row is gonna stay the same now. We'll take negative five times three. That's negative 15. Add to 19, we get four. And we get a one here. I'm all of a sudden feeling much more confident 
about this. 4 times 5 minus 1 times 3. That's 8 times 17 for a final answer here of 136. Now, a lot of those things that I did at the end were completely optional, and you didn't have to do them that way. If you felt like multiplying 19 times 109 and subtracting 26 times 79 because you have access to a good calculator, you're certainly welcome to do so. I just want my students to know that this is how you can make these numbers a little less intimidating, especially once they start getting really, really big like this. So, hopefully you were able to take a lot out of this example.